All right, we're at uh, Ashford uh, Small Engine Repair, and uh, I've noticed that no one on YouTube has a video of how to completely take apart an engine. Now uh, we're going to actually show you um, if you you know say you're uh, you're not getting the thing to fire, and uh, you might think that there's a problem. Can you uh, show them what's going on with this engine? Um, basically, what's going on with this is uh, customer brought it in and said he had uh, easy to pull a pull cord, so. Basically, uh, I think what we have is a connecting rod issue. We're just going to show you how to dismantle it. and. Uh, well, and, we'll start uh, with a compression test. Yeah, we're going to start with a compression so, test and go so from there. We'll take this off. We've already pre-loosened all the bolts, so that way it uh, can be a little time, uh, time efficient. This here is just a compression tester. Uh, you basically use whatever hose is necessary for the proper uh, thread size. Just a quick connection, uh, compression tester. Hold that there and uh, make sure your ignition system is off. Pull the cord. And it keeps spinning. <laughs> normally, normally your gauge would go up and you should have uh, around 100 to 120 PSI. For good compression. Good compression yep. engine. And we're going to actually show zero, you. So yeah. We're, uh, we're going to dig into it a little deeper here. Yeah. And we'll show you uh, ways of improving the the um, compression so all right well let's get this puppy um, apart first I guess we'll disassemble we'll take the carburetor off we've already taken the cover off which was here there's an air filter and then there's the air filter over there goes on there yep it goes in the oil all over my leg <laughs> all right so here's the bolts here we already took the one underneath there's one underneath there that you can see we just loosened it up because they're usually pretty hard and there is gas still in there just so you know Okay, I guess I didn't get it all the way. I'm fired. You pull back on it a bit. And it's still, still just grabbing on. Holding on with dear life. That's probably the most difficult part to, uh, Taking the engine apart. Yeah. It's also having the right tools, which I learned after uh, coming here. All right. So it's also better to actually keep that part completely all assembled, rather than having a, there's a gasket in between here that can uh, you know rip. So you uh, you're better off to just take it apart like that. This is um, this right here. It takes the the gas that actually, or the fumes that come off of the, the oil crankcase, and it goes back into the engine to uh, make it more efficient. So, bottom bolt there. Well, I guess I missed. It. And that wire thing that is for what's it for? The governor. The governor is usually the another tricky part to get off, I find. But I think, yeah. Oh. So yeah, just a little bit of messing around there. Um. So that's basically off. What we're gonna do is remove the, uh, the recoil starter housing. One bolt there. You can see that there's, you'll notice on this one there's a few bolts missing. So. Basically remove that. So really the, the whole purpose for me doing this is that uh, I'm actually going to be showing you guys how to run an engine on steam made from this. I've actually got a modified version of this, um, which I've uh, in 
you know, made it a little bit better, made it better materials, a little thicker. So, uh, just wanted to uh, give you guys the tools to, uh, what's that saying, uh, feed a man for, uh, give a man a fish, feed him for the day, teach him how to fish, feed him for life. So we want you guys to have free energy, and uh, I'm going to give that to you guys. Oh, I guess we will. <laughs> so. Okay, basically what we're at here now, uh, you would need a specialty tool for uh, removing the uh, starter clutch. And what is um, this tool called, or? Just basically a starter clutch removing tool. Okay. Um, there's another, uh, you'll see when we use that piece. Um, basically all this is is a thing that you can, uh, it grabs onto there and then you can remove it with a, an impact gun. And uh, this is also the coil as well, just to point out. It's where you get your spark from. There's basically your starter clutch removed. See, it's like a, it's almost like a one-way bearing. It locks one way and freewheels the other. So when the engine starts, it freewheels. When you pull the cord, it locks. Cool. Um, once that's off, it's uh, almost a two-man job. You uh, put this on there, which is full of uh, brass, so you don't damage the end of the crankshaft. In this case, this motor probably won't be going together back together so we don't really care too much about that but you uh, you just apply a little bit of uh, leverage onto the rear of the flywheel you got to make sure that your pry bar is not pushing on the uh, the uh, coil back in there if it has a lighting coil this particular machine does not and then you uh, just tap that it allows it that you don't damage the end of the crank, like I said, and it, uh, it basically pops your flywheel. Um, like I say, and there's no coil in this one, so. Yep, and also, uh, just to show them that this is the, the magnet that drives your spark. Yep, creates your voltage as it's spinning around. It comes through here and creates a voltage. Um, there's a flywheel keyway in there. Those sometimes do break. They shear off. And don't lose it. If it's not broken, do a hard impact usually, but um, okay. Basically, that's uh, that end of it tore apart. I guess what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll remove the head on it here now, and uh, while preparing all this, um, we actually broke a bolt now. Uh, Now, can you suggest to anyone if they're not able to get, if the bolt's not spinning, what, what they should pro possibly do? Maybe use a torch? Uh, yeah, sometimes you can apply a little bit of heat. In this situation, you got kind of no choice. You can't, you can't get in there to apply any heat. Sometimes uh, heat will help uh, expand the, the material that it's seized into and re let you remove it. Yeah. Um, usually when you go to steel to aluminum, you got to put near an instant corrosion. So just if you're ever reassembling an engine, you always want to put uh, never seize on the bolts. That uh, they don't yeah. do it during what, assembly. What, what about some old uh, motor oil? Would that would that help too? That would help too. Yeah. If you don't have um, any. Yeah, if you're in a pinch, definitely put something on it. Yeah. All right. Um, so basically, Let's get the head we can off. Uh, we can remove here. Um, Ooh, now look at all that. That is not good. And that's yeah, that's that's our, pretty average. There's a broken bolt. Yeah, and it's uh, uh, now stuck which in now here. If we were rebuilding this engine, we could uh, through a process drill that out, put an easy out in it, remove the stud, and then re-drill it, re-top it, and make it as good as new. Or we can put a Healy coil in it too. Healy coil kits is another way to do it. Um, now, if we look in here, normally, if you would turn the crankshaft. Your piston would be going up and down. That's what I was saying. I think a connecting rod had broken this engine. Um, you can see the uh, exhaust valve opening, and then the intake valve would open. And uh, they actually look like they're seated pretty well in there. Pretty good. Now, normally the piston would be coming back up, pushing the exhaust out the uh, out the muffler. But All right. we have issues below that, so <laughs> now we keep digging, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see what uh, we find out here. Cool. We'll, uh, we'll pull the side cover off here now, I guess. 
Oh, and uh, you might want to remove the oil beforehand. We we yes. prepared everything. We just made sure that uh, we didn't waste any time with the, the little stuff. So basically we just uh, took that bolt off with a 3 8 uh, uh, three-eighths wrench and it uh, then we just tipped it off to the side and got the oil out there'll still always be a little bit of oil left in but uh, so I had a problem when I was doing this before I met Austin um, I couldn't I, I was having an issue taking off this plate and I, I you know it wasn't moving easy I didn't want to hammer it and break something so I uh, so I found out that it is just, you just got to hammer it. There's these two little sleeves that we'll show you afterwards, right in here and in here that hold it in place.